Hello, you amazing, beautiful people, and welcome back to another Taylor Swift Friday. And of course, we are continuing the Folklore Long Pond Studio Sessions this week. I checked out the comments on last week's video, and you were all pretty much saying you'd like these to be a little bit longer. Um, so I'll try and make them a little bit longer. I usually just end them as and where they sort of suit the ending. So I do apologize. Obviously, we can't make them too giant for like editing reasons and that sort of stuff. And because of how we do the reactions here, the episodes end up being around 40 to 50 minutes anyway. So I'll, um, but I, I, I saw like most of you want like quite a lot of songs in there. So we'll do our best with this one. I am really already massively enjoying this. I love the talks in between each song. I love that sort of personal touch that we get from it. It really like makes it really fun listening to this album for like the first time all the way through and having those like personal touches between each one. And a little funny story. When I went downstairs the other day, my wife had actually started watching this and she'd watched nearly all of it other than the last 15 minutes. So yeah, I, uh, I actually just realized something. I actually just realized something. Two things. First, I'm recording this in advance. Um, so it's, I think I'm, I'm recording this on Tuesday and this will come out Friday when Taylor Swift's album's out. So I will be doing reactions to the album today. Hopefully they should already be out and you should have seen them all. Um, and uh, someone told me that the album is split into four sections, A, B, C, and D. So if that is the case, then my reaction should hopefully be split into four sections too. So you should get four videos today. Hopefully, if everything's gone well, then by the time this video drops, there'll be four uh, videos where we react to all of Taylor Swift's album. But the other thing I feel like I should say, and I probably you probably already know this because I imagine I announced it in uh, my album reactions, but I went on. Um, I've uh, I've got Taylor Swift tickets. <laughs> They're not mine yet, um, but I've bought them obviously on a on a on a on the website you've all recommended. Um, it's a resale website, so I didn't really have a choice. I had to buy them on the resale website. It's pretty much any place you can get them, but it's the one everyone recommended. You all know which one I'm talking about. And um, I've bought them. I, I got them. And my wife and I will hopefully being being will hopefully be going to see Taylor Swift in August. So if everything goes well, I should be good. <laughs> so I'm like bombarding my wife with Taylor Swift stuff now so we can get her to become a big Swifty and then we can go along. You guys are going to need to let me know about what I need to do with what I need to wear, the, the friendship bracelets, have what, the, everything. I need to know the answer to go and I'm a little bit excited. <laughs> Every time I think about it, I feel like sick and I feel like I'm going to cry. Um, anyway, 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 this intro has been like, what, three minutes already? I just wanted to let all of you know, but I've already probably announced it in a video, but I thought I'd announce it here as well. I am, I'm so... I've seen so many bands. I've probably seen over a thousand bands in my life. I used to go to gigs all the time when I was younger. I'm not exaggerating either. Um, but I don't think in my life I've ever been as excited to see a live performance as I am to see Taylor Swift. I cannot wait. It is unbelievable. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking. Let's jump into my first time ever reaction to Taylor Swift's Folklore Long Pond Studio Sessions, part two. So we've already reacted to XR, but it is a truly beautiful song. And I am very excited. My wife actually said this might be her favorite Taylor Swift song, by the way. I can see you standing, honey, with his arms around your body. Laughing but this is XR, isn't it? Funny at all. And it took you five whole minutes to pack us up and leave me with it. Holding all this love out here in the hall I think I've seen this film before And I didn't like the end oh, You're such not a... my homeland anymore Such a beautiful song You were my defending ground You were my town Now I'm in exile seeing you out I think I've seen this film before I just had to pause just to say, I love this song. I love this song so much. It was one of my first ever Taylor Swift reactions and it just makes me realize I never stood a chance. I was destined to become a Swifty the moment Jamie sent me a message saying, hey, have you ever reacted to a Taylor Swift song? You'd probably enjoy it. That was it, it was over for me then. <clears throat> Found a home I didn't even know I was missing. 
I love you guys. I can see you stay around, honey. Like he's just your understudy. Like you get your knuckles bloody for me. Slow tone. Second, third, and hundredth chances. Balancing on breaking branches. Those eyes add insult to injury. seen this film before and I didn't like the ending I'm not sure problem anymore so who am I offending now you are my crown now I'm in exile seeing you out I think I've seen this film before so I'm leaving out the side door so step right out Taylor, god damn, oh, these two are just the, <laughs> these two are just a fucking brilliant duo, you know that? Always a very thin line. Oh, the lyrics are you crushing. You didn't even hear me out, you never gave no one inside, all this time. This, they work so well together. I love the dynamics of um, of of like of like the lyrics as well, where it's like you never gave any signs. I gave so many signs, and it's like there's another song that does like a really I can't remember what it is, but does like a really good job at looking at a relationship for from like um, two like the different perspectives of people, and it's so true because in a relationship, I knew. I knew a couple, um, it's like, it's, it's a little bit personal here, so I'll be a little bit vague as I can, but I literally knew a couple where um, one of the people in the relationship was done, wasn't involved, like, they were, like, talking to us, and on one side, I won't say who, because I don't want to, like, get into any depths here, um, <clears throat> but let's just say one person in the relationship was talking to us and saying that they pretty much felt like they were out of the relationship, they weren't, they weren't involved in it more, they weren't feeling the same, their feelings were different, but they were still together. Right? Meanwhile, the other person had no idea. The other person apparently was literally talking about proposing and, and moving the relationship forward. And I just found it so interesting how it can be, you can be so blind when you're in that bubble, you know? How like one, like someone could be giving signs to someone else and that person just isn't picking up on them and it's just wrapped up in a, like think every, but uh, like two people in the exact same, in the exact same like train car think they're going to a different destina destination. That's what I mean. It's like, it's, it's really interesting because it's something that you don't think would ever happen, but it happens so much. I don't know if I made any sense there. I really tried. I was trying to be vague because I didn't want to like say too much about like personal situations. Um, but yeah, it was like, it was really weird like talking to pe two people who are in a relationship feeling two completely different things. And just like watching it from the outside and being like, wow. It's like they don't, they both don't see what the other one sees. Is is it, it was like, it was really weird. We always walked a very thin line. You didn't even hear me out. You never gave no one a sign. So many times. I've never learned to read your mind. I couldn't turn things around. Taylor's voice on this.
amazing, amazing, amazing. Whew. Man, that one was hard. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Ah, oh, come on! <laughs> we got. That? I mean, to me, the whole thing. <laughs> we're, we're going into my tears, Ricochet. We're going into my tears, Ricochet. Wait, I have to. I have to check something. Did I? Did I? My last reaction. Oh. I might. I might have messed up here. My last reaction. Ah. I do, I massively apologize, because my wife watched um, this, it's not starting where it ended off. I massively apologize. Before we jump into the next one, I just realized I didn't react to the prelude before Exile, did I? I totally missed it. I'm so glad I remembered that. We'll check it out now, we'll check it out now. I do apologize that I'll be checking this out afterwards, though. I, I do apologize. The two co-writers were here. <laughs> Justin Who? Vernon and William Bowery. Justin is, a, is uh, one of the greatest ever. Uh, William. I never got to meet. There's been a lot of discussion about William <coughs> Bowery and his identity, because it's not a real person. It's not? Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing a bit. <laughs> the bit, that would have gone on forever. <laughs> what? <laughs> Who? When? So, William Bowery is Joe, as we know. And Joe's, Joe plays piano beautifully and He's always just playing and making things up and kind of creating things. And Exile was crazy because Joe had written that entire piano part that dun 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 and it was singing the Bonnie Vare part that I can see you standing, honey, with his arms around your Jesus. body, laughing, but the joke's not funny at all. And the I, too? yeah, he was just singing it Jesus. the way that the whole first, first verse is. Wow. And so I was entranced and asked if um, we could keep writing that one. And pretty, it was pretty obvious that it should be a duet because he's got such a low voice and it sounded really good s sung down there and yeah. mm. in that register. Mm. And then um, we're really, really, really big Bonnie Iver fans. And, you know. So cool. We know that Aaron knows him. But we were, <laughs> I, was a, I was too afraid to suggest it. But I, I just, when I sent it to Aaron, I was like, this is a, hopefully a duet. We, I don't know who with <laughs> who would it be with who do you think would be good with this and Aaron was like I think Justin would love this and you're like really like, okay that could be interesting he I was... couldn't say it I couldn't say really? it is that really my... what happened no I couldn't say it with my with words because if he if I would have said it and he would have gone to Justin and Justin would have said no it would have hurt too much interesting and we, when we talked about it I was like I think he's gonna be really inspired by this and when and then we sent it to him and he was and then the process of working on it and, and what he sent back and he wrote like we didn't oh. you didn't ask him to write anything but he wrote yeah. this, he wrote this like he wrote this amazing bridge da, 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 he wrote so da, step, right, step out, right out there is no amount and like that whole bit i kept thinking <laughs> this isn't really going to happen like justin is going to change his mind about this because amazing this isn't amazing. a part of my reality there's no amazing. way this is going to happen he's going to He's gonna record the vocals and then decide he doesn't want to be on the record, and then it just never that just never happened. Like he just he just is on the album, and he's just the coolest, and and that's what's happening. That's so cool. That is so cool. I love that. You know what I find really cool about that is that Taylor is literally nervous about reaching out to someone. Isn't that crazy? Because we are like. I, I like it's so weird. It's it's weird because like you, I just wouldn't expect her to be, but at the same time, it makes perfect sense that she is. That's why it's weird. Taylor is one of these. Just I don't even know how to describe Taylor, but I I'm always both completely like yeah, that sounds like Taylor, and also wow, Taylor did that. You know, I'm both like completely like acknowledging and surprised at the same time. It sounds exactly like something she would do, and yet I'm completely surprised that she did it. Does that make sense? And that's not just with this. That's with every time I hear anything about Taylor. Like someone's like, did you hear Taylor did this? And I go like, wow. And I'll be like, makes sense. <laughs> it's like always that reaction. I can't believe my tears ricochets the next song. Where do song. we start? The, I mean, to me, the whole- I have already reacted to this one as well. So I'm going into it with like bulletproof armor, so I may not cry, similar to XR. Um, but this song is brutal. This is, not, this is two songs back to back that's not fair. Yeah, chronologically, that's the first thing. I wrote that one alone. And it was 
it's definitely, I think, one of the saddest songs on the album. I'm so yeah. doomed. I think it's one of the best songs you've uh, written. Oh, thanks. Which is, I think, why you crowned it as a track five. Yeah, picking a track five is, is sort of a pressurized decision, but I knew from day one this was probably going to be it. All right, you guys got um, to let me know what the track five kind of thing is. It's a song about karma. Yeah. It's a song What's about the track five thing. Have I been told this before? Greed. I don't, I don't it's remember. It's a song about how somebody could be your best friend and your companion and your most trusted person in your life, and then they could go and become your worst enemy who knows how to hurt you because they were once your tr most trusted person. Mm -hmm. The worst betrayal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It does remind me of people going through a divorce and having that person that they swore to be with forever then become the person that they spend most of their time talking shit about. Yeah. And it I always find it crazy when you think about like breakups and divorces and that sort of stuff and how like when I look back, I've only ever had one other serious relationship and I've been very open about it. It was not fun. It was a very brutal relationship and I went through a lot. And the person I was at the end of that relationship was just a just a, a terrible version of myself. This like bitter, angry version that I was twisted into becoming and I just wasn't happy anymore. And it was like, it's a, it was a really sad like part of my life where I'd like been cheated on, seen it happen, been told what I was seeing was wrong. I literally saw my ex cheat on me in front of me and then was told, she literally turned around, walked up to me and told me that what I saw was wrong. And I remember it's so weird in those moments, you like have these voices of doubt in the back of your mind that are just like, just like, w w was I wrong? And it's like, no, you weren't fucking wrong. What do you mean? And I remember literally like feeling that and being like completely shocked at what I was feeling. Um, and it, I, I was like a bit of a hothead when I was younger. My temper and like was, was not great um, in situations like that. Now I never get angry. It's my, my like, it's like, um, it's, it's weird. I like, it takes so much. I'm just like really calm in general. And it's, it's strange how much you change. And like I said, that version of me is one I'm not proud of. But in that moment, I always thought, and this is this is this is just me being honest. And I might I, I'm some of you might not like this, but I I apologize. It's just me being honest, as I always try to be. I always thought if I ever saw my ex cheating on me with someone, you have these random thoughts. I was like I'd go nuts, you know. But in that situation, that's not what happened. I was heartbroken and I asked the guy, I was like, did you just do what I think you just did? And he was drunk and he went, yeah, I'm really sorry. And I just turned around and walked off. And I remember just being, I just didn't say anything to my friends and say anything to anyone. I just walked out of the club and walked off up the road. And I, and like a couple of my friends, like these, these girls that like, I never wasn't even that close to chased after me. And then I did like a whole loop and went back to the club, uh, just talking to them about what I had just seen. And they were just so sweet. And they were both like, oh, but these two girls that I was cl close to, but I didn't think I was that close to, were just like holding either arm and were just talking to me. And I remember just like, I was just like so calm and heartbroken. It was such a weird feeling. I always thought like I'd lose my mind, but I just, I didn't. And it was really strange. I'd never reacted like that to something before. And what I'm trying to say is I, it's weird how I can look back on my past and I spent years with someone who is now a complete stranger to me, but was such a big part of my life. And it's weird with divorces and relationships that that becomes a thing, you know, that you can be with someone for so long and then just you wake up one day and they're just gone and they're still living and they're still out there and they're still doing something, but they're no longer part of your journey anymore. And just like that, Someone who was your best friend for 10 years is a complete stranger. It's, it's, it's scary. It is that ultimate betrayal when someone, <clears throat> you know, messed you up from the inside. Mm -hmm. Writing this song, it kind of occurred to me that in all of the superhero stories, the, the hero's greatest nemesis is the villain that used to be his best friend. Spider-Man! Um, that sort of thing. When you think I can't think about of that, any other examples. think about how... <laughs> there's this beautiful moment in the beginning of a friendship where these people have no idea that one day they'll hate each other mm. and try to so try to true really take each other out god you know, i love how taylor's really explaining sad this and terrible. But, but that's the bird's eye view quality of the song that i think is so unique because in they're, they're both great but but sometimes you write like very in the moment yeah and you're like this happened and this is how i feel and i love that but uh this song which is interesting that 
this is the first one that happened because I think it became a huge theme on the album, is it's very pulled back. Mm -hmm. It's very pulled back and, and commenting on the whole experience of it. Um, it's very powerful to me. I am so doomed. After just telling the story as well, where my mind is now, this is going to hit me harder the second time around, I know. We got the heel, we line up, weeping in a sunlit room. And if I'm on fire, you'll be made of ashes too. Even on my worst day, did I deserve, babe, all the hell you gave me? Cause I loved you. I swear I loved you till my dying day I didn't have it in myself to go with grace And you're the hero flying around saving face And if I'm dead to you, why are you at the wake? Cursing my name Wishing I stayed, but get out my tears, ricochet. Man, I'm feeling this so differently this time round. I'm back there. Man, I'm back there. I feel so sad for my past self sometimes, because I'm so happy now, you know? I almost feel like weirdly guilty. <laughs> it's so strange. I feel like my past self is still someone out there living. You know, and not just like a memory. And I literally like, sometimes I feel, I wish I could go back in time and tell my old version of me that it gets better. Hang in there, it gets better, trust me. You know, your dream job, one day you're gonna be doing it. I don't know how it happens, one day you wake up and you're a YouTuber and it's just like, there's no way that ever happened to me. And the idea of these, these lyrics, I couldn't go with Grace, I didn't have it into myself to go with Grace, but you're the hero walking around saving face. And I'm just there, I'm sucked back in time. Taylor's writing is masterful. I literally feel like I'm staring at a window to my past self and watching me become this angry, bitter, twisted monster. Just this, this person who's just so upset with like the relationships ended and I couldn't do anything to save it. And even though looking back at it now, I'm like, you were treated so wrongly and you, you, like, you didn't deserve it. But in that moment, I felt like the bad guy. I did nothing wrong, but I felt like the bad guy. And then I just became this person that no one liked. I lost everybody because I was just so sad about this situation. And I feel so sorry. Now I look back at it and I just feel so sorry for myself. <laughs> you know, it's so weird that you can be the person who gets cheated on. And, and then because of how the relationship ends, you just like, you just become just this like angry person and you push away everyone else. And it's like, you, I, it's just that line, that line, but knowing like, I, the version of me back then was the one that just didn't have, didn't save face, but she did, you know, it's weird, her, her writing is fucking insane, how does Taylor do this? <laughs> we gather stones, never knowing what they some to throw, some to make a diamond ring. You know I didn't want to have to haunt you, but what a ghostly scene. You wear the same jewels that I gave you as you bury me. Wishing I stayed, look it up. 
I both love and hate how much she's feeling this. You can see it in her eyes. You can see it in her, the quiver of her lips. You can see it in the way she's leaning to that microphone almost angrily. How much she feels this song. How much this song means to her. And I, I both love that. Because it like adds this incredible layer of emotion to this performance. And I hate it because I, I know she's feeling so much pain. And it's crazy when you think... Do you know what? <laughs> it's crazy when you think I'm sitting here reminiscing about my, my, my young t teenage broken heart. Meanwhile, Taylor's thinking about... Nothing to do with a relationship the real story behind the writing of this song. What people did to her, the stolen lullabies and the references, the way that this song is written is so intelligently masterful. I can so see why it's considered some favorites. It truly is just an incredible testament to beautiful and masterful writing. <laughs> I didn't have it in myself to go with grace And so the battleships will sink beneath the waves You had to kill me but it killed you just the same You cursed my name, wishing I stayed You turned into your worst fears And you tossed and I Creating beauty and art from pain is one of the truest testaments of someone's resolve and strength that a human can ever do, I believe. To go through any kind of, any kind of suffering and to come out it, come out of it with something so special is incredible. I always say that people feel very guilty for feeling angry or sad or something. And I'm, I'm guilty of that as well. I like, if I cry, sometimes I feel like I should be apologizing for crying because even to this day, I still get told that I shouldn't be. And then I believe when people tell me that I'm like, maybe I shouldn't be. And it's weird because it's just like this battle in your mind. And it's like, um, Just the fact that, I don't, I, man, I don't even know where I was going. <laughs> Just the fact that a human being can go through something like this, feel pain, whether it's a breakup, whether it's business, whether it's something, and to come out of it with something so incredible is just amazing. Taylor is freaking, she's just a genius. But yeah, like I said, I always say like, um, Simply put, we feel situations make us angry, situations make us sad, situations make us happy. And people will look back at situations and be upset that they reacted that. I didn't have I didn't have it in myself to go with grace. And you can feel bad, like, oh, you know, I should have been more professional, I should have been this, I should have been that. And I always think, um, no, that situation made you angry. You're human, and you were given that emotion to feel angry. We are so lucky that we can feel jealous, you know, happy, ecstatic, romantic and in love. Um, we can feel heartbroken, 
like just the just laughing at complete ecstasy or bliss, lust for someone. We get we feel all these incredible emotions, right? Because we're supposed to. So I believe if a situation makes you feel a certain way, enjoy it. Enjoy feeling the emotions. And I always just lean into it. That's what I do with my reaction channel. That's what I do here. I'm not an analytical breakdown person. I'm not gonna like analyze and break down every single part. I'm gonna miss a lot of stuff and I apologize when I do. But I hope my reactions come across as one of the most genuine on this platform because I'll never be the biggest reactor. But I would love it that one day if there was a tournament that was like, who is the most genuine reactor on YouTube? I would love it if I was just nominated, you know? I always make sure, and I believe that what I do is I just make sure that when I'm feeling an emotion, I lean into it. If I'm feeling sad, I lean into that sadness. If I'm feeling happy, I lean into it. If I'm feeling angry, I lean into it. Because I'm supposed to feel them, just like Taylor was supposed to feel angry and upset when she went through this. And writing that and embodying those emotions again into her writing is what makes her stand out above so many people in this industry. She's just incredible. Mirable. I don't think I've heard this one. Where there are a lot of songs that reference each other or <sighs> lyrical parallels, and one of the ones that I like is is the entire song "This Is Me Trying," then being referenced again in Mirrorball, which is I've never been a natural. All I do is try. Yeah, I remember that being an interesting one for you to actually put down. I remember you said it and you did it, and then you were like, <clears throat> "Should I say that?" Should I was I like, do? "Is that too true?" Is that? <laughs> and I think um, with Mirrorball. Sometimes when I'm writing to an instrumental track, I'll push play and I'll immediately see a scene set. Mm. And Her imagination this was one of those amazing, cases where I just saw, you know, lonely disco ball, twinkly lights, neon signs, people drinking beer by the bar, um, a couple of stragglers on the dance floor, just sort of a sad, moonlit, lonely experience in the middle of a town that you've never been. So you're telling me <laughs> we've had exile. <laughs> we've had friggin' we have we have not we've had my te your tears ricochet. We were like, <laughs> and now apparently Mirable, a song I don't think I've heard before, is a sad, lonely like. Come on, man! What can we not? And this next song is a song about fluffy bunnies and them having a tea party. Come on, Taylor! What are you doing and to I me just here? I was thinking, okay, so. We have mirror balls in the middle of a dance floor because they reflect light. They are broken a million times and that's what makes them so shiny. We have people like that in society too. They hang there and every time they break, it entertains us. Jesus yeah. Christ, and Taylor, your mind is when insane. You, when you shine a light on them, it's this glittering, fantastic thing. But then a lot of the time when the spotlight isn't on them, they're just, they're just still there up on a pedestal but nobody's watching them. Well, it's a myth we love and then we create it for people. Yeah, it's it's the whole- Like the, do the broken thing, do make the it fun, thing. now make it sad. Yeah, Now make but, it cool, now make it sad. Yeah, but when the light's <laughs> off, be okay. Yeah. It was, a, it was a metaphor for celebrity, but it's also a metaphor for so many people who have to feel like, I mean, everybody has feels like they have to be on for certain people, for, you have to be different versions of yourself for different people, different oh versions at God. work, different versions around friends, oh different my versions God. of yourself around different friends, um, different version of yourself around family, around, yeah. you know, you just, everybody has to be duplicitous um, or, or feels that they have to, in some ways, be duplicitous. And that's part of the human experience, but it's also exhausting. And you kind of learn that every one of us has the ability to become a shapeshifter. God, she is amazing, isn't she? What does that she? do to us? And it also is the first time, and, and one of the only times that, that the time that we're living through was actually lyrically addressed. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, the pandemic and lockdown and all that runs through this album like a thread because it's an album that allows you to feel your feelings and it's a product of isolation. And it's a product of mm. all this, you know, rumination on, on what, what we are as humans, blah, blah, blah. But this is the first time in the bridge saying <coughs> they called off the circus, burned the disco down when yeah. they sent home the horses and the rodeo clowns. I wrote this song right after I found out all my shows were canceled. And it's like, I'm still on that tightrope. I'm still trying everything to keep you, to get you laughing at me. So yeah. it's like, I realize here I am writing all this music, st still trying. And I know I have an excuse to sit back and not do something, but, I, but I'm not, and I can't, and I don't know yeah, why don't that is. It. But I'm, that's what makes it, to me, a great piece of 
pandemic time work is that it's not about the pandemic, it's about the experience of what happens to an artist when you're living through a pandemic. Yeah, you start there, you start... You start to dream. The spotlight yeah. goes off. Brilliant. Brilliant. Brilliant how this song can be... Brilliant how this song, and literally what she just explained there, she said it's like a metaphor for what a celebrity would be feeling in this situation, the spotlight shined off of them, no one cares, nothing's going on, right? That situation. But she also says it's also how everyone has to put on that face, how everyone is a different version of themselves around someone else, how everyone is a shapeshifter. And that is so true. I believe every single one of you watching this right now has had some experience in that, in that regard. I am really proud of, I'm really proud of my ability to not have that anymore. I would say, it, uh, this it's just gonna sound really weird, but one of the things I've learned to do over the last few years, and I think that's why I've become so emotional on camera and so raw on camera, is I don't have that anymore. And maybe it's also why my friend circle is so much smaller these days. <laughs> but I don't have that anymore. I've learned to let that go. So now I'm just the same with everybody. It's weird. But I, I remember when I worked in my old job, maybe it's this job that's given me that freedom. Maybe. I remember when I worked in my old job, I would have to be different with every single person. Oh, I can't say this around this person. I can't act like this around this person. That person doesn't like this. And I'm so grateful that my circle is so much smaller now where I can just be me with everyone all the time and with you guys. And I'm so grateful that I've created this, this channel and this audience keeping that so you all know me. And if you meet me in real life, I'll be the same. Hopefully I see some of you in London. Um, I can't remember what day I'm going. I think we're on the Monday in August. The uh, second, the second, the second to last night. Um, but yeah, like, it's, it's nice. And if you guys meet me, I'll, I'll just be the same. And I, I like that, but I, I so feel that, what she said. And I'm guessing so many of us do as well. Family members, friends, we have to be different with each and every one of them. A new Taylor song for me, I'm excited. I love how she has the ability to do that. She goes like those like high note whispers. I'd never know how to correctly describe them, but she'll go like, like I, that. that's literally what I can think of. She'll literally like be singing normally and then she'll like do like a high note, but it sounds like she's whispering. It's incredible. How can someone whisper and sing? I don't understand. You know, it's like, don't let them hear us, but I still really want to sing the song to you. So I'm going to whisper it to you. It's like, it's fucking amazing. Amazing, amazing talent. Love it. Love how she sounds. But I'm still on my tallest tiptoe. Oh, I love it so much. Spinning in my highest heels, love. Yes. Shining just for you. I want you to know. Oh, that man is incredibly talented, isn't he? What well, he's he's amazing. I'm a miracle. I can change everything about me.
I really love this song. I really love this song. Spinning in my highest heels, love. I really love this. And they called off the circus, burned the disco down. When they sent home the horses and the rodeo clowns. I'm still on that tightrope. I'm still trying everything to get you laughing at me. Oh. And I'm still a believer. <laughs> oh my god, the way she said laughing is like turned it like a three point like like note. <laughs> One word. Oh my word. <laughs> I really love this song. I'm really feeling it. I'm really feeling it from Taylor. I'm really feeling the song in general. I'm really loving it. I'm really, really loving this from her. This is and this is this is this is powerful and moving and relatable and yet somehow not relatable. It's everything you'd want in a song. It's incredibly emotional and real and I, I, it's just so well done and so heavily layered. I love it. But I don't know why. I've never been a natural. All I do is try, try, try. I'm still on that trapeze. I'm still trying everything. To keep you looking at me. Oh. Because I'm a mirror ball. Oh I'm a mirror ball. I'll show you every version of yourself tonight. Oh. One incredible showcase of absolutely amazing writing. Layered writing as well. Isn't it just, isn't it just fucking amazing? Her mind is so awesome. It's so awesome. I just like imagine like the craziest, most wacky things any human has ever seen, you know? Just like absolute insanity. <laughs> Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory, uh, Adventure Time. You know, like, just like, uh, isn't there like something in SpongeBob where like they go for like, that, like some sort of weird, like hallucination or something? I don't know. I just imagine like complete crazy insanity, uh, like incomprehensible to anyone but Taylor going on inside of her head. You opened it and looked in, like I've said this before, like Ark of Covenant. I just feel like that's what it is. Uh, like when it, like her, her mind is, she's doing exactly what she was supposed to be doing. That, that is it. Taylor has found her part in the jigsaw puzzle of life and has just slotted in. Like she was like, oh, this is where I'm supposed to be. Perfect fit. This is exactly what she's supposed to be doing. And her mind and her songs and her attitude and her energy and everything shows you that. Everything. Is the guy's name Aaron, by the way? With Seven, the song, I was looking back on it, I've always What's the guy's name on the left? When I, see I do apologize, I, I'm not, I don't know it yet. In a grocery store, like part of me is like, man, I feel you. Like, <clears throat> when did I stop doing that when I was upset? Like, when did I stop being so outraged that I would throw myself on the floor and throw the cereal at my mom? <laughs> well, it also doesn't stop, but where does it go? Yeah, like that so, feeling, like we're still having that feeling, but yeah. So the idea is, is, you know, please picture me before I learned civility. Like I used to scream mm. anytime I wanted. Obviously, uh. you know, we can't be throwing tantrums all the time, and we learn that that's not the right thing to do. It's not the right thing to do. But <laughs> there's something lost there too. But we should do it. I understand what Taylor's trying to say. I see. I, I will read between the lines. Taylor is saying we shouldn't do that. But we should do that. Okay, don't worry, Taylor. I, I got you. I got you. Okay, from now on, tantrums every time. Every time I'm upset about something, I'm literally, I'm full broke. I'm front, I'm throwing stuff. I'm losing my mind. All right, I got you, Taylor. I understand. <laughs> Oh, I 
see. So her explanation at the beginning of this was she was talking about seeing children in like a supermarket throwing those tantrums, and she's like, it's like a song about reminiscing about your younger self. When did you stop feeling like that? When did you stop acting like that? When did you stop doing that? At what point in your life do we go from the past versions of ourselves, these young versions who act a certain way, to the versions we are now? When do we stop doing things we didn't even realize we stopped doing? Dressing a certain way, acting a certain way. Those things just stopped overnight. We woke up and we didn't do them anymore. And it's just weird. And then the, the new norm takes effect. Interesting. Weirdly sad, but also nice to remember those parts. Just like everything Taylor does, it's multi-emotional. There's no single tone to it. <laughs> and I've been meaning to tell you I think your house is haunted Your dad is always mad And that must be why I think you should come live with me And we can be pirates Then you won't have to cry Or hide in the closet And just like a folk song Our love will be passed I don't know if it was meant like this, but I love how she said I used to scream ferociously anytime I wanted and then the song transitions to Taylor doing these beautiful notes now, right? And this beautiful vocalizing. And in my head, I immediately just like, saw like the mirrored version of that, of Taylor now as an adult, you know, controlling her emotions in a way that we would all deem sensible. Um, and vocalizing that like note that she was and then like paralleling that with the younger Taylor throwing a tantrum over cereal and those screams the screams of the past and the beautiful screams of now sweet tea in the summer cross your heart won't tell no other and though I can't recall your face I still got love for you pack your dolls in a sweater we'll move to India forever pass down like folk songs the love I love her brain. <laughs> that sounds so weird, but it's true. An incredible mind. Incredible talent of creating this art from thin air, from nothing. Amazing. Amazing. And there, my friends, thus concludes this week's long pond studio session reaction well i can't imagine you're all going to be too sad about that considering when this video goes out you would have had a lot <laughs> you would have had a lot of taylor today right this is literally gonna be taylor day oh man <clears throat> just know behind the scenes of today has been like crazy for me um because I would have done the entire Taylor reaction. So this is Future Luke. So it's Tuesday, Future Luke on Friday. So my plans currently for Future Luke on Friday. Have I got a hair hanging from me like here? I just feel like I can see it. Um, Future Luke on, by the way, you all will find this funny. I was recording an earlier video and uh, and a cat just popped up at my window, like right next to the window. And just like, <laughs> the cat and I made each other jump and it like, it like ran off. It was, it, um, it's the neighbor's cat, but it was really, it just literally ran out my window. It scared me, it was funny. Um, Anyway, um, yeah, Future Luke on Friday will have the entire um, Dead Poet Society album to record a reaction to. How Then I'll have to edit that, upload it, hope nothing gets flagged, sort that all out, 
Um, and then I will have to record my usual reactions on top of all of that and then any extra videos on top of all of that. There could be some first take ones, they usually drop Fridays, there might be a K-pop video in the morning. Um, and then yeah, I'll have to record my usual four videos on top of that, edit all of them and everything like that. So just know, behind the scenes, Luke right now, is, is just like, imagine like, spin, you know when like those people spin the plates, they like run around and they spin all the plates, that's what's going on. <laughs> Friday's gonna be crazy. Oh man. But I, you know what, I have faith in future Luke, he can do it. I've had, I've had crazier days. I believe in that guy, he's got this. Um, and he's probably gonna be smiling the whole friggin' day. My first new album release, it's really exciting. It is. I know I'm gonna miss like a million references that people are gonna get, but luckily I've got you wonderful Swifties to help explain it all to me. Um, so that would be absolutely fine there. But yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be fun. This is my first Taylor release, won't be my last one, but I'm looking forward to the next one already where I'm even more of a Swifty. I don't know if that makes sense. Can you be more of a Swifty? I don't like wording it like that because I'll never be more of a Swifty, but I'll be a more knowledgeable Swifty. I feel like that's better. Um, where the next release after this one, I'm more knowledgeable. I pick up more references and I understand more. That is the version I'm looking forward to. I know I'm gonna miss quite a lot on Death Poet Society. Um, so I'm looking forward to the next one, more than this one. And I know people might be like, what do you mean? But what I mean is I'm looking forward to the version of me and when Taylor releases a new album, I pick up on loads of things. I'm like, oh my God, this, oh my God, this. And I'm like tracing it back to old songs. I can't wait for that. And I know I'm gonna miss quite a lot on this one. But that doesn't mean I'm any less crazy excited for it. Anyway, this is, uh, this is th these, today made me realize just how emotionally heavy Folklore is as an album. It is devastating. It is completely well layered. It like contrasts how the world was at the time and the songs represent that too, but not just how the world was, how people would be feeling, how Taylor was feeling, the changing times and, and maybe reminiscing as well. It really feels like this album was written with complete raw emotion from the feelings that the pandemic threw on all of us, where you're sitting there, the entire world has changed around you and you're looking at your past and you're thinking about your past and you're reminiscing about your past, remembering parts of yourself and going down that rabbit hole and remembering different past versions of yourself. But on top of all of that, you are also looking at the world around you, how the world has changed, how people have changed, how that makes you feel, how the situation is affecting you and how you're thinking about other people. And it feels like the entire album was simply written with all of that in mind, with all those emotions and all those feelings, taking different avenues, but so relatable to everybody who was going through that at the time. And it just, once again, just shows how normal and human the freaking superstar goddess that is Taylor. <laughs> it, it like just is <laughs> crazy, right? So normal and yet so not normal in the best way. <laughs> but like I said, it really makes me realize how emotionally heavy this album is. Folklore seems like a really difficult album to put on, listen and not cry through. I feel like it's just, it's impossible. It's too heavy, but so beautiful. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this reaction. A nice bit of a longer one for all of you there. Have a freaking amazing weekend. I hope wherever you are in the world is the best weekend ever. Let me know what your, uh, let me know, I don't know. Do you want to put your favorite song from, uh, from her new album in the comment section? But I'll be replying to a lot of comments in the other videos as well, so don't worry. Hopefully people enjoy the reactions. Hopefully they do well and people like them, and people see them and enjoy them. Um, that made me really happy because I know I'm going to enjoy making them. Anyway, have an amazing weekend. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, my friends, you will see me in the